Okay, so yeah, I mean, this one, uh, today we're going to follow Lao He Sang's uh, speech. And uh, I think his speech is much more, how to say, relatable and the way he processed it for us, uh, make it digestible for us. I think I will try my best to use English to share it with you guys. I mean, I'm pretty sure right now uh, I'm pr I should know my place. My place is just a conduit, a conductor, transmitting whatever I know from Chinese into English. That's my place. I won't, I'm not at the level where I can give out, originate any source of wisdom yet. So I need to follow the path first and uh, adjust according to the, you know, people I'm talking with. Dispense accordingly. So now I know my place. I'm humbled. <laughs> okay, so we shall begin our session right on time. That's a very rare occurrence. Uh, thank Buddha we got here. So uh, we will begin our session. Thanks for coming, first of all. Uh, we'll begin with our eight uh, ten times army tour for, and we'll start from where we were last week, last fortnight. A mi tuo for, a mi tuo for, a mi tuo for. A mi to fo 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 so today we'll continue with the last week, not last week, sorry, <laughs> last fortnight, uh, last week is just practice, last fortnight on the um, speech, on the talk of no killing, abuse, surrendering prisoners of war. And I have just realized I skip a quote. Um, Apologies for my disorganization. I skip a quote after that. So right now, I'll rectify it by going through in order. So this phrase is quite obvious. It's about Geneva Convention in our modern sense. And what does Geneva Convention means? That is no longer, uh, we cannot do, uh, how to say, harm to those people who has given up their resistance in our uh, military operation, or in other words, combat. Uh, operations with the uh, oppositions. Once they give up resistance, it be it become from you know, from trying to, you know, win the objective through killing, becomes duty of care. Obviously, it's uh it's a real world out there. It's not clean cut, but we need to respect uh, this part of our s s humanities. Uh, you know, like if there's no live and let live. Okay, let's live by this quote: live and let live. So this is what this phrase is trying to say: uh, live, live and let live. Uh, understand that uh, both sides are um, being pushed through these directions. Uh, a lot of them is because of killing karma. I can go very straight to the point from here. There's no need for me to put it around the bush. Killing karma caused the results uh, in the acts of killing. Or being killed. So in the Chinese, there's a phrase, 人死为羊, 羊死为人. Uh, when people die, it becomes goat. When goat die, it becomes people. And then they They kill each other to repay the killing debts. Um, <clears throat> in the current life, we can think of this in the form of, you know, retributions, vengeance, vendetta. All these things come out because the karma of killing. So war itself is unfortunate, we know that. And the cause of war beyond the superficial one, which is all oh, this political instability and all that, those are superficial. We call it what appears to be the, uh, the symptoms of war. But the real root cause of war is, uh, is this, you know, how to say, this killing karma has been committed again and again. And it was done in a very uh, backdrop of everyday life, not um, just happening in homicide or in some you know, criminal case, but it was done in the backdrop of everyday life, like in butcheries, like in supermarkets. All right? And if you want to go from the act of killing into the, the thought of killing, 
that's even more widespread. You know, sometimes you get so angry, you say, I swear I could have killed whatever. You know, sometimes you get angry. You don't mean it, but that thought is already there. It already planted a seed. So these things happen, and these things are uh, what we call, um, it's just a matter of scale. All right. If these things accumulates too much, harbors too much resentment, it becomes a problem. It becomes an act. Right? Your act is essentially uh, how to say the the executing the commands of your thoughts. Ultimately, it's in your thoughts. All right. So here, uh, in in Buddhism term, we call it karma. You know, this this is, karma is just simply a word to describe. You know how the cause and the effect works, you know, yeah. So karma is an act, uh, arise out of thought, through, through thought and then going through speech, coming out through speech or coming out through actions. Um, and those are intertwined together. So killing is one of the most uh, worst uh, karma that one could have committed. And next to that is sexual misconduct. So these two comes side by side, and causing a lot of trouble to the society nowadays welcome how so so this one uh is obvious but i would like to share a quote um also shared by jane which is very good and i think i should push it out there to everyone this is a um book written by i think more like a memoir wrote by a um one of the soldiers in the german side i believe i think it's a german side i don't know one of the you know the the Entente, which is the you know the Anglo-French, and then the other side, which is the Central Power, which is the the German side, is always German, and and English. They always fight back then. So this is during World War One. This is a memoir of a soldier who rem uh, reminiscence back in the days when he fought the war and how it was like in the trenches against the enemy. So what he say is, comrade, I do not want to kill you. If you jump in here again, I would not do it. If you would be sensible too. But you were only an idea to me before, an abstraction that lives in my mind and call forth its appropriate response. It was that abstraction I stepped. So let this word sink in, in our mind. It was that abstraction I stepped. At the moment of his act of killing, he did not think the other side as like him, a human with all the emotions packing it, with all the relations of families and friends. He think of him as a obstacle, as a, how to say, enemy to his um, own group, his own nations, whatever flag colors he flies. So using that kind of thinking, you know, that, that act of killing, uh, thinking, he commit, uh, that, that mode of thinking, he commit the act of killing. In a sense, he didn't, he didn't essentially see a human and murder him. He sees a obstacle and just neutralize it. See, even the military terms neutralize as if you, you just bulldoze a roadblock away. So when he, you know, after the act and after the operations, maybe he lost, maybe he won. We, know, we don't know, uh, just based on the book. So Paul broke Bomer to the French soldiers. So he's a German, basically, in the German side. Um, so he talks about this uh, French soldier that came in and he stabbed him. But after the act, he sink in and think, but now for the first time, I see you are a man like me. I thought of your hand grenades, of your bayonet, of your rifle. I see your wife, your face, and our fellowship. Forgive me, comrade. We'll always see it too late. Why do they never tell us that you are poor devils like us? that your mother are just as anxious as ours, and that we have same fear of death, same dying, same agony. Forgive me, comrade, how could you be my enemy? If you throw away these rifles, these uniforms, you could be my brother just like Cat and Albert. Take 20 years of my life, comrade, and stand up, take more, for I do not know what I can even attempt to do with it now. Part of you dies as well with this act. Um, because in, in the end of the day, this everyone has a how does it conscience and what conscience means is that it's you know, Buddha nature, awakening. And people do not do this just like that. They were conditioned and pushed towards that. And a lot of this conditioned and being conditioned into is due to your karma of the past. Right? 
something was set in motion in the past and now you just happen not happen you are the result of what happens in the past right not just happen that sounds way too casual and irresponsible you are the result of your past karma your no one else your past karma and these things these things that happens to you these people events or you know just things material stuff or sp mental stuff or spiritual stuff whatever it is uh, that happens to you is a result of the past karma uh, individually and then collectively and so this man is also one of them we are also one of them uh, uh, until we achieve enlightenment this is uh, this will keep going on so thinking about uh, 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 how, 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 uh, how poor this guy have to go through then we understand that um, there's no reason for us to harbor any more um, hatred or resentment um, towards one another because this thing in according to the infinite life sutra you know uh, between brothers and sisters between uh, husband and wife between friends colleagues do not harbor resentment quickly let it go for it will f start from small embers into the great engulfing flames all right and you will get trapped into the flames and when that momentum has built up to a level where you can't stop it anymore like war like as you can see in the news murdered husband murders wife wife murdered husband or you know family stuff, stuff like that or you do something you you never know you who could do it but at the heat of anger or passion it happened and that's a result of this accumulated karma 从小危起成大困惧后世转聚自成大愿 in next life or in the future all right Some, sometimes even so serious it doesn't even wait for next life it happens but most of the cases it will accumulate more if you do not let it go all right all right this brings back to the importance of having um, wisdom and compassion because ultimately the goal of wisdom and compassion is to save yourself the first person you save is yourself not me not others is yourself only then you can save other people all right so all this learning is just to save yourself and by saving yourself you save people around you all right you can't save others when you're drowning you can't save others uh, from drowning when you're already drowning that's no that's it's not logical so going back to the point um, Paul Bomer to the friend soldier stepped to death this man has uh, just doing his job being brought into this wagon killing wagon and he lived his, the rest of his life with pain trauma uh, and, 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 and his conscience edging at him and he didn't, do, he didn't commit murder in the sense of wanting to kill but yeah so avoid it guys avoid it do not harbor resentment all right nothing you in the other hand the way you can think about it is the world is not perfect anyway it's not the it's it's it is a result the, the, the existence of this state of the world right is the result of the past karma and the, those the karma are not clean it has so many what we call unskillfulness putting yet unclean and pure all right greed hatred ignorance hence the result of the, the mental state result of your physical state it can come in many forms mental state physical state all right even spiritually disturbed as well some people um that one is a bit uh, uh hard to see easiest to see is the physical state deaf blind uh mute um uh you know physically disabled and then mentally this uh, mental health all this is a result of the past karma and our job here is to learn how to change it first by not creating more problem to yourself that's how you change it first step of solving the problem is avoid creating more problem then we can think about the solution otherwise it's like playing that hammer in the arcade you knock one down and another one pops up you knock that one the other one pops up on the other way it's never ending okay back to the point to kill abuse or any troops of war we've already done that we know war is um war is miserable in ancient times war was treated as ancient china uh, i'm pretty sure in other parts of the world but in ancient china recorded the rights of war is even your victory you treat it like a funeral all right you don't like 
drink and celebrate. You, you treat it like a funeral. You lost your comrades. You, many people die because of this. Many poor folks who just you know minding their own business get caught up in this, and and this is a big tragedy. So that is already a tragedy. Let alone abusing someone in, in under your control. All right, because they already uh, uh, surrendered. So this is something that should not happen. Um, to purge and remove sages and abandon their wise teaching. So after reading Master's um, explanation on this, it, I really have to say Master Chinggong is really, really wise and smart. The way he incorporates this is, well, reason why people doing this killing, um, you know, uh, is because they have, you know, enclosed, their heart is closed, engulfed in hatred or engulfed in ignorance, uh, being led. And also sometimes even they are aware they're bought on this wagon, you know, this um, train, which is currently disturbing me right now. The train, all right, uh, of war, uh, of, 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 of fervor, patriotism, of uh, you know, fascism, that kind of, um, you know, uh, feverish, uh, passion. And this is also a result of the, of the collective karma. And, and the, on, the only way you can get out of it or be, is to be aware of this and and being aware of this takes someone who's already awakened and already um, get out of this crappy situation to tell you this is a crappy situation do not indulge, indulge in it and people who are um, aware and able to get out of this crappy situation is called sages all right because they are mean by you they're aware and understand the truth of the universe, all right? Uh, the truth of human life. Why am I like this? Why are other people like this? Why am I conditioned? Why am I born into this condition? Any form, mental, physical, spiritual, all right? Why is others having better mental, physical, spiritual conditions? Those things, all right, um, is a result of our very own doing. And we may not know now, doesn't mean that it was not done, all right? Um, so sages will tell you right now this is why it happens this is the analysis report of why it happens and when you understand that oh you kind of get a ballpark understanding of that then you get into detail how to do what's the plan what's the actual plan to change it all right obviously you need to adjust every time you encounter different scenarios but the principle does not change all right first thing is the five precepts is the principle you know, no killing. And the killing act of killing is born out of that misguided mindset. First thing is the strong, the survival of the fittest, Darwinism. That kind of mindset that, um, I don't know if I understand that, that teaching, but a lot of people misinterpret maybe Mr. Darwin's teaching. Fittest as in, I don't know, if strong, you bully the weak. You know, uh, might is right. You know, something like that. My knuckles is bigger than you, so you must listen to me. All right. Hence the act of killing, act of bully, in a lesser extent. So, without sages teaching you, this is stupid, guys. You know, you do that, you can take all the glories, you can take all the loots, you can, you know, like you know, enslave entire civilization, and you know. Um, you know, replacing them, you're dominating them. That's that seems awesome and wonderful, but everything has consequences. Every action, oh, sorry, comes with a reaction. It's fair. It will come back, and it will come back. Oh Lord, ten times worse than you thought. Now, I'm not going to graphic onto this. Now, using that line of thinking. Follow me on here. Uh, follow me, uh, uh, me on this line of thought. Losing this line of thinking, you can think that you know those tragedy, mass tragedy that happens in human world might it be because of the collective act of uh, unwholesome deeds in the past that results in this great tragedy that happens in our human history, mass atrocities, you know genocides and that was happened in the past i'm not saying that this is right nothing none of this is right two wrong doesn't make one right or something like that 
uh, two wrong doesn't make one right, something like that. Wrong is wrong, all right? Um, evil is evil. It has to be, how to say, it has to be educated. It has to be, um, first has to be stopped, and then it has to think with a cooler head, and then it has to be ingrained, trained, like, a, you know, train up your muscles in gyms, it has to be trained and practiced like, in a, like a discipline, like in your studies, in your career. It has to be practiced and disciplined until you're able to uh, say, I'm not going to f- follow the flow of karma uh, in the past. I can withstand it now or I can divert it now to the better outcome. Those are, those are real things. Those are serious things. Those are things you can use um, in your life to change your current status to a better status. That's the whole merit of this speech, talk, discussion, right? It's to how to help you change from the terrible consequences or from this state of living you're in to a better, higher state of living, all right? Because in the most obvious way, everyone wants to get the better quality of life. So they work hard, they earn, a lot more money so you can afford a mortgage buy a house all right uh, live more comfortably so does your mind so does your spirit everything so these things these things are these things are result of karma good karma and how do you do that you need to stop the act of bad karma and how do you know all this how do we how do I know all this sages without them how do I know all this right I'm still a foolish ignorant dude acting on impulse well i'm still am sometimes but you know knowing this takes a lot of hard work from the side of the sages trying to show us the point because we don't get the point we poke and we say some rude things we humiliate we sometimes even some people even kill them you know look at the how 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 the uh, teaching spread out in the very beginning of the uh, foundation founding of this um, major teachings all right. So purge and remove is a great disservice to yourself or whoever created it. They do not know. So there's a saying in Bible say, forgive them for, for they do not know they sin, something like that. And in, in, in Final Life Sutra or in, in Buddhism, um, it says that um, people do not know in the, in the beginning. They do not know in the first place. So every single evil deeds they do, are forgiven. Uh, they are not acting morally because they do not know there's a better path out of this primitive, you know, strong eats the weak kind of mindset. All right. And if we keep propagating this kind of mindset to our next generation, we're doing them their disservice. All right. We're poisoning them. All right. Uh, so this this kind of mindset we need to uh, be careful. All right. So whatever the theory of whatever prominent figures doesn't mean it's correct. Right? It just means that they are very good, smart people. But are they aware, fully awakened? Pretty sure we, 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 we don't know. Right? So because there's uncertainty and their characters are also not fully proven to be uh, fully worthy of trust. Or how to say, they are not, have not proven themselves to be a sage. So just because they have some interesting theories, mindset, all right, they are engaging to your senses doesn't mean it's correct. All right. Humans have so much things blocked in their memories. All right. We do not know so many things because one person, in the absence of this void, ignorance happens. And out of ignorance born a lot of speculations. Out of speculation, all these theories mostly born out of this kind of ignorance. Sometimes knowledge is ignorant because stuck into one set of thinking or stuck into this xiang xiang, imaginary thinking is ignorant. All right? Buddha don't do that. They don't, he don't just sit there one day uh, enjoying the body tree and say, I'm going to imagine pure land. I'm going to imagine this. He don't do that out for fun. He, it's like a person sees something's uh, sees a, a person drowning he has to think something to save this person from drowning so I have to find something that can float hence the boat or something a shape of a boat or, or a padding board 
he has to mate it quickly so that that person is not drowning. There's a need for it. All right. If there's nothing happening, he don't think of anything. Everything is peaceful. Those theories that we follow, or these modern theories of whatever how the universe came to be, they are very interesting. I love listening to them because it's like a very fascinating part of human mind how they can imagine something that is not there sometimes. But they are born out of ignorance. They do not have meditative tranquility. They do not have um, uh, ability to see things as it is. All right. It does not saying that every single thing is wrong. It's just that those theory are still a theory. They are not proven by you know practice. All right. But at the same time, too rigorous to the set line of thinking is also another form of um, what to say extreme. All right. One is born of nothing. You think of some imaginary theories and people just hug it and say I came from monkey sorry man I don't come from monkey I come from third level of heaven in the my ancestor came from third level of heaven you can go and come from monkey I'm not gonna acknowledge that sorry all right so so it doesn't matter what belief or not those things we never know until you die uh, and I don't want to go too far the whole point of sages is to tell us how do we alleviate our condition to a better state that's something we all can agree on all right otherwise we won't res they would their teaching won't be passed down for many years all right um, sometimes it does not get through people people use their imagination and diverted the teaching or twisted the teaching that's another story guys but the actual sage itself who's trying to help them he has to find a device that can stop you from from sinking so there are many forms to stop you from sinking. So hence there are many forms of religion, teaching, terms, gods, whatever. But essentially, the intention is there. Stop you from drowning, improve, make your life better than you were, and then improve. Hence, they are worthy of respect. I have to go all this length to talk about this is because that's how I felt. And that's how I agree with Master's teaching as well. These people are not, uh, how to say, they, come, they don't come down here with intention of you worship me, I am your boss. They come down here simply to do their job, trying to get you out of there. Because they themselves experience this ignorance, the pain of suffering through ignorance, and finally enjoying the fruits of you know the hard work to attain enlightenment. Then they want you to enjoy uh, the, the fruit of their hard work and also want you to um, use your energy in a better place. All right? uh, otherwise, you keep drowning you might uh, you don't know how to swim and you keep drowning it's it's sad so they teach you how to swim they teach you how to float and then they teach you how to build a ship so that you're no longer sinking they teach you how to uh, all the all the theory and physics so that you can move forward faster and then they teach you that there's a destination you can reach you no longer have to go through these bloody seas time and time again sink again then and then this sage comes and lifts you up again and then you sink again and then lifts you up again. Mate, they are very patient, guys. All right. The fact that we are here right now is because they have already been lifting us up many times. I felt that. I don't know. I can't see. I felt that. All right. This is where compassion comes from. All right. All right. So many people help you to float. All right. Like now you may feel shitty or anything, but the fact that now you still have a cognitive clear brain. Uh, receiving this teaching, I myself felt this too, is because uh, you know we were helped, and we also have our own capacity to accept the teaching. These two works together. All right, the gift has a lot to give. The giver has a lot to give, but the receiver needs to prepare himself to receive. If you only can take one gram of good stuff from there, you can only take one gram. All right, if you really want to change your life around, you need to broaden your. Uh, scope you need to receive a bucket instead of one gram you need to be able to receive a bucket otherwise you have, you only have a one gram worth of um, uh, capacity that's on that's all you can take and the result is the cause is because you you're not opening up yet that means the mind is not open yet the heart is not humble enough to accept it all right and then eventually when you grow more compassionate more wise your capacity grows bigger. And so the giver can give you even more. If you can, 
you can take all of it. And then you become the giver. Alright, my metaphor can go at that far, my I was stretched that much. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Alright, pass the bucket guys, pass the buckets. Alright. Uh in your own way, capacity, form. Alright. The point is compassionate. And compassionate first thing is compassionate towards yourself. And aware that you're no longer in that little you, you're not trapped. You're just trapped but you're not Honestly, you're not alone, all right? All right? Like, there's so much materials here and this condition here to help you. And there's a way out, all right? And, and, and do not be slave to your uh, mind. This is just a hardware. This hardware, it, it will do whatever it was programmed to do. The problem is you need to be strong enough to overcome this programmed mindset and override it so that you can have a better program running it's like you don't want to run on that windows 98 upgrade to windows 10 please basically all right that's what we, we realistically can do now all right what was not right in windows 98 we fix it and then we install windows 10 all right and now if we cannot be patient through the process of installing windows 10 then we will never get to the good stuff of windows 10 we're like, ah, oh, it takes too long, cancel, and go back to Windows 98. And then deal with all that old-fashioned apps that cannot function as well as Windows 10. So have to be patient to grind through this waiting period. That period will feel lonely, will feel crappy, will feel sad or something like that. But if you want to upgrade, imagine like a butterfly before its butterfly's cocoon. Right? Before that is a caterpillar. Caterpillar going to cocoon state is such a painful painful thing or before you become human coming out of mother's womb you stuck in that stomach for nine months poor our poor mother also have to go through this but you yourself have to stuck in this stomach for nine months Buddha described the feeling is like when mother drinks cold drinks it becomes frozen hell when mother drinks warm drinks it becomes hot hell right when 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 there's too much wind, it feels like windy hell. When they don't drink anything for too dry, it feels like drought. So you have to go through nine months of this tribulation to be a human. All of us. Unless you Buddha, you can just come up here. It's fine. Because he has great merits. You will too if you attain enlightenment. But the thing is, right now the reality is we have to go through this cocoon to get that. All right. The fact that you're aware of this, you accept this teaching, and you kind of let it sink in, no matter how deep it is, as long as you allow it to sink in, it will go deeper. All right. As long as you keep the door open. All right. Say keep the possibilities open. All right. Shitty situation. Sh I'm sorry. Crappy situation. Unpleasant situation. Yeah, my karma speech is really bad. Sorry, guys. Um, unpleasant situation. Unpleasant uh, uh, scenario. These two will pass. Pleasant scenario, pleasant situation, that too will pass. And learn how to deal with this fluctuation. It's very normal to feel very, very confused, feel very, very tired because um, we are not uh, having a strong root um, of faith yet. And faith cannot come without going through all this trouble and understand that, you know, I don't want to be part of this cycles anymore. I don't want to go through this anymore. If you have that awareness, then your faith gets stronger. Your faith to get out. And your compassion is gets stronger because you gone through all these waves of, you know, pleasant, unpleasant, love, hate and all this wave of human experience, you know. In Chinese we call Ren Shen the Suan Tian Kula, you know, the taste of life. Right? We will never be able to compassionate. If you live in that beautiful heaven and just enjoy you know, singing and floating around and enjoy the fruits of your good karma, you can't truly experience, uh, feel compassionate towards those people to, who don't have it. And hence your level stuck up there. All right? Using in real life scenario, people who live in the rich and wealthy place of the world, all right, or first world, better part of the first world, wealthy part of the first world, they will think, you know, if you're hungry, just go to Woolies. Just tap. Tap and pay. What's the problem? All right? There's a saying in the ancient... Uh, there's a story in ancient China. 
all right there's an emperor all right facing <coughs> uh, report the emperor is actually naive okay he's not malicious okay I just want to give a disclaimer that is because he's grown in that nice um, cocoon of wealth and when the report came out from the uh, minister saying that everyone is very hungry starved to death the emperor just say <coughs> why not they just get some uh, pork mint soup and fill their stomach mate context in ancient times having a pork mint soup is like once in a year twice in a year new year, happy new year mooncake festival kind of thing you only drink it when they're serious usually normal days you eat you barely have some grain to live by to feed yourself you know other than the taxes taken by the government so emperor says why don't they just get some you know um, some uh, beef meat they don't eat beef in ancient time a uh, pork meat soup um, and just and just and just uh, uh, satiate their, their hunger he said in such a naivety you know he's not like uh, being mean he just doesn't know there's such thing called hunger or there's such thing called famine in the world so in other way your unpleasant feeling or even crappy even um, um, terrible feeling that you feel right now will be a asset to you in future sorry I think like a businessman now it will be an asset to you liabilities becomes asset all right the thing is how do you turn it around all right, all right. everything is mate the world is bigger than you thought they, they bigger than what we thought or whatever fear of discipline claim they are don't get stuck by this kind of teaching stick to those people who have gained enlightenment who have proven themselves through their characters and you will get to a bigger wider world <clears throat> and start from yourself you know first you'll feel that you you're no longer suffering uh, that state anymore you're getting a better state of mindset hence your living quality as well it doesn't necessarily material it doesn't have to be materially rich you just need to be enough uh, content and you feel your heart has lesser thoughts lesser lesser wandering thoughts at more at peace right, that's the benefits of sage I'm trying to give you the merits of the I'm trying to illustrate the good things about sages and wise teachings it's not just sit there meditate and I'm a wise person it's this thing this thing that actually benefits you daily life that nourishes you like your food nourishes you all right the better mental state hence better resilience because you are positive not in a sense of fake positive in sense of it comes from inside things that come from arms outside we call positive is fake positive things come from inside it just gush outside it's called it's called nuclear reactor oh, sorry it's called a uh, uh, infinite generate uh, infinite kindness infinite um, joy uh, those things is what resilience are made of that means w whatever things happening outside all right you feel unpleasant or love or hate or whatever you acknowledge it you are able to turn it around and become your tool to advance even further I, I heard Master Chingon say one word I love it he said to be honest if you know how to do it modern times we keep saying that modern times we have a worse environment everything is seducing us we don't even need to go to um, in terms of sexual misconduct don't we need to go to brothel to be um, influenced by this thing you just need to stay at home and watch internet and you got all the troubles and all the poisons or in terms of killing you don't even need to go and actually become a soldier or go out and fight with people just go stay at home play call of duty shoot some people and you already have the have the excitement of killing and all that so all these things is easy accessible at home but with the help of teachings and your own capacity to enlighten you know you you have you all have that we all have that this is the best place for you to practice this is the best moment for you why ancient times they can't they don't receive the test that intense they have still have a nice beautiful um, human will as in everyone still follow the decency and more kind uh, rule of and 
conduct uh, compared to right now more um, lust more um, hatred more prone to anger more prone to uh, uh, indecencies more prone to selfishness more prone more prone in ancient time it takes a longer time to reach that point right now you just stay at home open an iPad there you go so if you know how to use this to your advantage you get you become Buddha no in between you just become Buddha Do you guys get that? Like instead of having level one, level two, level three, suddenly you were thrown with a uni level question, university level question. All right, and then if you can pass it, you got the bachelor at the age of one, something like that. Obviously, it's not easy. Hence, the feeling of defeated, the feeling of more mental pain and struggle, because in, back then there's still this support network or there's still this um, content. Because materially less advanced, people also don't have that much expectation out of their life. They were like, yeah, if I can live up to 50, oh my God, we should have a Usuta, so we should have that, you know, big celebration of, I live past 50. People are more content, even though they short life. Even though the conditions would be terrible, they got drought, they got government, they are not stable. Obviously, they are shitty, uh, trap, uh, unpleasant times, but yeah. But right now, we have all these materially advanced things, but bombarded with all these sensories it's just it's just more how to say more challenging because we're, we're, we're tested with so much thing we suddenly at this younger age we need to deal with more pressure it's not that we are weaker than the ancient people or we are you know inherently uh, worse than them there's nothing than that you know like Confucius said in his time which is 1,000 10,000 1 to 5,000 I don't know thousands years removed from the earlier sages of Confucius time he say, Soon Yao Kei Chen Shen, Woman Ye Kei Chen Shen. He has that level of ambition. The Emperor Shun, the Emperor Yao, which is the people who are sage, basically a role model of him. If he can be a sage, I can be a sage. And he didn't say it with bragginess, he is that confidence. That's what I'm trying to say is that level of power it comes out from inner happiness. It's, it's, Im it's immeasurable, it's powerful. All right. So we can apply to modern time. If you know, um, uh, if Confucius can be sages, you too can be sages. <laughs> I know, I know, it's hard, but yes, you can. The thing is, to get to that point, you need to grind a lot more harder because this is, uh, this is you are already tested at a younger age than your peers, one thousand years ago would have. Your peers, which means your age. All right, in school, you are tested with all these tests, tests of five precepts, you know, the lust, the hatred, the uh, uh, greed, the, uh, the, the, the doubt, skepticisms, all these things were tested. You were tested at a very younger age, very young age, uh, compared to your peers a thousand years ago. So there's nothing wrong if you feel under the strain. If you think on that perspective, you feel a bit more relaxed. As I say, I feel a bit more relaxed now. Doesn't mean that I, I stop, means that I need to pace myself. All right, once you know the gap, you can start working towards it. One day, one night, one moment. For us, Amitofo, Amitofo. If you can't, Sutra. If you can't, read some books that actually helps you. If you can't, come to here and talk, talk about this. If you can't, go to somewhere else that can give you that help. You, you, you instinctively find help. Right? Everyone wants to be better. No one wants to be sad. No one wants to be feeling crap. Okay. All right, guys. I um, I'm gonna move on. All right. This is good stuff, bro. Good stuff. Better than drugs. Better than cocaine. Better than the the vape people are having. All right. Those things have side effects. Have symptoms of withdrawal. This one you don't want to withdraw. This is a good drug. All right. It does not even it doesn't even have side effects. All right. If they want drugs, this is a better one. All right. They should have it. If someone say religion is the opium of masses, it's because of ignorance, all right? And people who ignorantly use the religion to further their own goals, use that as an opium to themselves and they opium the rest. They all become a drug addict and do things from outside instead of inside. 
So they all appear as a set of religious followers, but their insight is full of hatred, ignorance, greed, um, skepticism, and all that, all that, all the qualities that breaks the community apart, or stuff like that. All right, it's not the teaching or not the founder itself that has the problem. All right, keep that in mind. Whoever is reading this, all right, I'm sick of that word right now. All right, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to take it anymore. Religion is opium masses because the people who came after, all right, you mix their own poison into this pure, clean well of water. The founder themselves do not have that intention. And I declare this in front of you. Now, let's move on. Last one, before I open up a bit, uh, because we have 15 minutes to go. This one is to abuse and exploit widows and orphans, accepting as a judge, law enforcer or prosecutor bribes for the purpose of perverting the cause of justice or misuse and misapplication of the law. In Chinese, Ling Gu Bi Gua, one word. So the first half is Ling Gu Bi Gua, right? People who has been orphaned, widowed, instead of being compassionate, instead of being, um, you know, lenient instead of being um, understanding empathetic we use you know we use bully we use verbal bully mental bully physical bully you know in your capacity say as a step parents or as a um, adopted parents all right or for the widows as well bigwa you know forcing them to do something they do not want forcing them to marry you or forcing them to commit uh, sexual misconduct stuff like that all right, using um, sweet talking, using seductions, stuff like that. So these unwholesome deeds, all right, ultimately is born out of ignorance, born out of uh, how to say imbalances inside, hatred and all that carries from the past. We never know until you you enlighten. But the problem is the act itself is a transgression. All right, so people who already often, all right requires love, requires a parental figure. And it is in our duty as a communities to try to help to find them to a family which have this um, system in the very least orphanage that can help them to have at least a little sense of comfort or shelter. Because kids are very young and tender when they were started out. It's no matter what we, we, we think of it is at a young and tender age, right? It, it, it requires a bit more um, sensitivity. It's like a young sapling that just grown out of um, soil. You need to take care of their posture, otherwise they crook. All right? You need to take care of the composition of water. You more carefully compared to the 100-year-old tree, they can take anything. Either less of a soil or nuclear bomb, but they can take anything, as long as you don't throw a nuclear bomb at it. So, Young saplings, you need to really coordinate, right? You can see that in our city council. You need to see them putting all that rack you know, so that they can grow up straight, all right? They can be growing straight if you give them the right support. And then more careful with the use of fertilizer and water. And then if it's too sun, sunny, you need to cover it up. I don't know too much about it, but somehow it's like that. Um, at the very least, I can be sure that the posture is very important to have when they starting to grow uh, a little bit more, more more mature, starting to have the branch. So <clears throat> that's what the orphan needs. They need to have more support network, especially at that age. Otherwise, you can see a lot of memoirs and all these successful people, they are, they are young age, they have so much pain and regrets. And sometimes they even you know, yearn for some sort of a fatherhood or motherhood. Um, from other people, love of a mom, love of a dad, from other people. All right, this alone is enough for us to um, try to help them instead of going against our better nature and do this abuse bully. You have no dad, kids. If you are not properly educated, they will do that. All right, they will be crooked. If you don't give them support structure, oh, let them be. They are free. You know, we they are young. They should be free. They should not worry about that. Yes, they should be free, they should not be oppressed, but they should also be straightened out if they're doing it wrong because they do not know. And it's our, and forgive them, 
Of course, they do not know. And we know better and we do not teach them and we allow them to commit abuse towards another kids. Say, uh, kids with parents, they are verbally bully or physically bully a kid who are orphaned. Right? Indirectly, the parents who do not correct the act of the children is also committing this thing. So, community education is important. Bikwa, widow, people who are widowed, how do you um, help them? All right? They need, uh, they already lose their uh, partner of life. And that trauma, I would say, is not something you would wish on your enemy. Um, especially those that pass away at that young age or pass away at a very um, quick way. It's like being ripped off suddenly. Uh, it's not something you want to experience in your life. And I hope that I do not experience it or anyone experience it. But it happens because karma. And karma is done by the past. And it will happen again, no matter how long it takes. All right. So this kind of challenges is there already. And as a community and as a, as a society, we should always uh, support. All right. Widows, all right. single mothers, they are particularly strong. Or single fathers as well. Right. Strong people. A lot of um, people raised by single mother, single father were grown well, more grateful than others. Uh, sometimes even more grateful. You know, sometimes. But some who cannot withstand the pressure of daily life. It's the daily life that is the worst part. It's not like sudden trauma. That one is worse, but the daily grind of you know, looking at the empty side of your bed and then you know, going through the children, three children, four children, or one children, doesn't matter. You have to raise the kids. And then going through the tra- pressure of paying the bills and all that is enough to invoke, um, how to say, at the very least, the sense of uh, wanting to help or empathy, let alone forcing them to do things against their will just because, uh, say, it looks pretty or something like that, you are lusting over it, all right? There's a lot of um, cases in the, even in ancient China, there's these people, rich young men or something, look at a widow woman and lust over her because she was widow very young. And she's like, ah, oh, trying to seduce her, pull her over, all right? The right way of doing it is properly support them out of kindness. And if the affinity is correct, then fine but not the other way, not the way of trying to lust over the uh, body or appearances. That's what's wrong with the society right now. People focus so much on that part. So what, what we're trying to do right now is, is, tr- is, tr- is, to be, uh, is to build a more, how to say, supportive and genuine society. And this act is against it, against our better nature. Hence, this is a, one of the great trespassing um, problems. Also, Orphanage, um, retirement home, because widows can also be re- refers to the elderly, right? They pass away, they're old, uh, half re- pass away. And so, so this ref- relates to these two very important institutions of our uh, uh, society, orphanage and, and retirement home, um, especially for, of, uh, for them. Uh, it's an it's, uh, it's, uh, important uh, uh, opportunity as well to cultivate merits. Obviously, I do not encourage people to think, oh, I want some merit, so I help them. It's a merit itself to think to help them. All right, the merit, best form of merit comes in the form of unintended, natural, all right, state of compassion. That means you saw someone have problem, you help them, simple. You saw someone drown, you lift them up. If you can swim, or throw a rope to them, or trying to get as close to them and drag them to the shore. That's the merit. Right, you don't need to seek merit. Right. So this organization are, in a sense, meritorious by itself. And Master Ching Kong has expanded into this. Um, I can do it better uh, next week. But this one they say, um, to, um, um, I'm still talking about the first half. These merits of this organization should not stay only in physical physical care like taking care of the food shelter clothing those are important but these are step one they're not enough second step is the psychology they are you know entertainment you know how do they get by day to day right playmates um, for the elderly you need to broadcast the song that like not you, the song that you like don't broadcast uh, despacito to them broadcast something they like broadcast 
good old Frank Sinatra to those people in their eighties or seventies. The old those old songs and stuff like that. That's what Master Ching Kong share with other um, uh, other faiths um, uh, organization. It's like you guys are doing such a tremendous job. Deep respect to you, but um, it will be better if you guys can take care of uh, their spiritual needs as well. So what I mentioned that first two is more or less achievable. The last one is a duty of a re- re- spiritual organization, a religious organization, whatever we call it. Right? For Christianities or any Abrahamic religions, go to heaven. Right? How do they go to heaven? Help them cultivate merits. How? Give them an opportunity. They can, they can do charity for other organizations. Like they can have a fundraising or stuff like that. Those merits will be dedicated for their path towards heaven. For us in Buddhist temple, Master Shingo say, "What did our Mister Lee in the Singapore back in 1999? This is based on 1999. What did Mister Lee reply to these um, other uh, friend, uh, friends of other faiths? Uh, question: Say, what about you guys? What is your charity work in your religion? I say temple." Is our charity place the f- the retreat whatever the Dao Chang the Amitabha Sydney right now in our current places there you can see a lot of elderly in their eighties in their seventies they are doing volunteering work run in and run out day in day out all right that, uh, especially when we have don't have a permanent place to set up the temple to you know the places to do the ceremony. Everything has to be done on short notice, one week notice, uh, and sometimes two or three days notice. And you immediately needs to be present, because if we're not there, then we don't have time to prep up the whole hall and everything. Everything needs to be taken off, restored back to original condition at the end of the ceremony, at the end of the the, the day, so that the school can use it. The context is we borrow public schools um, hall to organize a ceremony. So these things it takes people and a lot of these people are already in their 50s and above. But a lot of them, they are like, you know, if not mid, mid-age, they are elderly. Some some people are even 80s, 60, 67, 60s and 70s, sometimes even 80s. But their body is still healthy. This is a sign of merit. <laughs> Give them an opportunity to even go into chop the vegetables or cook. That's merit. They fit hundreds of people sometimes we have like a lot of full capacity I don't know auntie say it might be up to um, auntie Cynthia say it might be up to 800 people pre-COVID I don't know about post-COVID but at least hundreds of people it's to be expected two three hundreds um, Jane and Judy if your parents also help uh, with with the uh, uh, with the cooking right you can correct me anytime at least hundreds right so yeah these are merits and this is how you uh, help them physically uh, because fundings and all that will come in. They will come in, don't worry. If you do really have the will, they will come in. And then the um, fundings will come in, which is physical, and then the, 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 the social aspect that helps with the mental or you know activities and stuff like that helps with the mental you know, passing times. Humans are uh, animals that like to work. So you give them something to work, they will be happy and especially in communities it's good for mental health so we already done this too and spiritual for you know chanting going to pure land and also the act of doing this charitable work gives the merits towards your you know chances towards the uh, born, reborn in pure land right? and then hearing the teachings every day in the kitchen uh, in the library in the hall you know through your um Dharma brothers and sisters next to you. That's important. All right. So there are merits uh, of having a Dharma place. Uh, not just our Dharma place in Pure Land, other Dharma place, Buddha Dharma's place, in other form of tr- other traditions. They also are mostly voluntary run and they do their best as well. And we witness that. We join them as well sometimes. And it, it's, it's such a touching thing, you know. And even other faith as well, their Dharma place is also have that. So the whole point is, um, um, I'm going back to this point. This, this, these are, how do I say, unfortunate circumstances in human life, but we can 
do so many things to make it uh, less painful, if not eradicated. All right, uh, there's a realistic thing that can be done, and it's a bit thankless sometimes, especially the person who started it, the founder especially. They have to go through the thankless um, job of trying to convince people by being genuine, being committed to their vow. You know, no matter how many skepticism doubts towards them, people will doubt you. People will shame you. People will, um, you know, uh, judge from what motive do you want? You know, what do you try to get? Do you try to pull my uh, support or something like that? And through time, it will be proven that if you're genuine, you really want to help people, you really have that um, strong root, strong faith, especially good, strong faith rested on strong foundation in the teaching understanding of teaching, thoroughness with the teaching. And that does not come cheap, guys. The fact that you can have that is done because of many life. Right now, your job is just to continue your hard work of your past self and improve on it. All right. So that's it for the first half. The second half, I'll leave it for our next session. Um, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you, everyone. And also thank you, Master Ching Kong, for his in speech. From his speech... I can grow better, to be honest. That's the reason why we still stick to the teaching of Master Shikong. Thank you, Jane, for the suggestion. This is really good. I don't need to do much. I just need to read and I feel it. Because Master Shikong really knows how to talk about things that relate to us right now. And I hope it helps you guys as well. You know, feel free to give feedbacks. But for now, uh, we want to end this with 10 times Amitofo and dedication of merits. Then we can discuss. A mi to fo 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 A mi for a me to for dedication of merits may the merits and virtue accrue from this dharma session adorn the buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below may those who see and hear of this aspire by your body mind by their body mind, vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Am Namo Amitofo. Thank you, everyone. Um, have a good night. Have a have a good week ahead. See you guys next fortnight. Um, anything? Any feedbacks, guys? Thanks, Dylan, for the speech. Thank you. Thanks, Hal. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Judith. Thanks, Auntie Yenzi. See you guys. All right. Bye. All right. Night-night. Bye. Bye.